So welcome, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bill. It's good. How are you doing? I am good. I'm very, very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, busy, busy, but all good busy. You've had a good busy day. That's good. Yeah. You been out on the golf course or? I haven't. I haven't played golf in. <laughs> I haven't played golf in about two weeks, unfortunately. I am. Uh, I'm playing golf next week, and uh, I need to prepare because I'm playing my partner's dad uh, on the 30th of July, and I'm pretty nervous. So I'm. I'm trying to get up to scratch on that. Well, no pressure then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Future father-in-law possibility, and you're playing in golf. Don't don't beat him. There you go. Right? Do I do I beat him or do I look really bad? So it, it could he could rip me, but also he could be livid that I beat him. So I don't know. <laughs> so excellent. I introduced you. Uh, you're a, an entrepreneur, self-made entrepreneur, a uh, best-selling author, and now an investor. So maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business journey and how you got to this, uh, got to where you are now. Sure. Um, how far do you want me to go back? Uh, 18. Go 18 years old. Okay. 18 years old. Okay. So um, so I'm from a town called Hooknow in Nottingham. And um, I came out of GCSEs uh, with pretty bleak results, to be honest. Uh, I dropped out of college as well, sixth form college. Um, and uh, yeah, I was basically a class clown. So I didn't, I didn't do, do, do very well in school whatsoever. Um, and um, essentially what happened from 19 to 21 it was kind of the roughest period of my life um I grew up with a single mother my dad left home at, uh, at 10 years old he was never to be seen again and growing up with my mother was was pretty hard it was pretty um difficult we didn't get on whatsoever uh, and unfortunately uh, we had, had lots of rows and uh I'm, I'm I'm mixed race so I got a lot of racially abusive comments from my mother and unfortunately at 21 years old I was kicked out of home and what happened then essentially is that I started to live with my partner and her mum. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I was uh, pretty low. You know, I was uh, suicidal. I was, uh, you know, getting in trouble. I was getting into fights uh, before I joined the police. And um, yeah, my future didn't look very good at all. So what I did was I actually told my mother um, at 21 years old, I, I wanted to take my own life. And the response I got was wasn't um, wasn't the one I expected. Uh, and instead of me playing victim, I then started to work towards being the complete opposite of my mother and father. And I googled how to become rich because I thought, you know, money's going to solve all my problems. I can move out. I can live on life on my terms and do all these amazing things, right? And what I now know, obviously, I was looking for monetary richness then, but obviously now, you know, being 31 years old and realizing that rich is actually in many forms, rich in health, rich in wealth, rich in love, rich in relationships, rich in health and fitness, right? All these different elements. But at that period, I was looking for, you know, money to, so I can change my life. And when I Googled that, it up came a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And it was the first book I've ever read. It was written in the 1930s. And basically, Napoleon Hill interviewed a lot of successful people back then. And uh, he accumulated this book, this all this knowledge. And I can remember reading that book. Uh, I can literally remember it. I used to have a uh, single bed at the time. Um, and um, I remember my tears hitting that book, right? Just thinking, wow, why is no one on planet Earth taught me this? Not my teachers, not my parents. No one's taught me this way of thinking. And in that first time, I realized, actually, I have the power to change my life. I have this, you know, um, ability to, you know, build something remarkable in my life. So that got me in the world of personal development. And one of my first goals then, Bill, was to become a police officer, because at the time I was a care support worker for uh, autistic adults with challenging behavior. Wow. So uh, one of the first goals was, you know, I want to become a cop and, uh, you know, for the uniform, I want to, you know, I want to probably security of being kicked out as well. And, you know, probably being a bit more recognized, I think was the word um, that I'm looking for there. And what happened, I became a special constable, first of all. Um, and then I became a detention officer for, for Knott's Police. And when I was uh, there in Knott's Police, I started to notice a common theme whilst I was there. And that common theme was that police officers that I were working with, 99% of them were bloody miserable. And for me, 
I didn't want to end up like these individuals I could see who are many years ahead of me. And there's a great Chinese proverb that says to know the road ahead is to ask those coming back. And I could see police officers 5, 10, 15, 20 years ahead of me who are miserable. They're not seeing their kids, they're stressed, PTSD, they have uh, mental health problems, they have cancelled rest days, working every Christmas and New Year, they're not valued for the pay. Pension was just the rife of the talk there. And I firmly believe if, if we bake a cake in life and I use those ingredients I just mentioned, such as council rest days, lack of pension, lack of pay, and I put that in a bowl and I mix that all together, nine times out of 10, I'm going to come out of that oven, that length of service, just like the people I was seeing who were miserable. So I kind of said to myself, well, I don't want to end up like that. So I kind of scrapped my dream of becoming a police officer whilst all my intake of DOs, detention officers, were going for the job. I was one the only one who actually didn't and how, how hard was that I mean, there must have been a lot of pre like pressure on you to like conform and um just go for it what you what are you trying to do Alex why are you trying to leave sort of thing yeah so well I was a special at the time as well as a DO so I kind of knew the role of a police officer I was making arrests and stuff like that and you know dealing with non-compliant detainees and you know people in the public um I think when I saw my detention officer uh, intake going for the, um, th their jobs. I heard other members of the police say to detention officers, you're out of your mind, what are you doing? I would never do it. And these were, these were people who are in the job, you know, the 10 year ish saying to DOs, what are you doing? Like, you know, do you, being serious as well. Are you sure you want to do this? It's not the same anymore. Right. And that was kind of a first instance, but also, there's something that I'm very aware of due to the books that I was reading. Because at this time, I was, you know, 21, I started reading these books. I was about 24 at the time. And I uh, was well aware of something called the herd mentality. Mm -hmm. And there's a great quote, again, I love my quotes by Warren Buffett. He says, observe the masses and do the opposite. So I saw my, you know, people going to these jobs and becoming, you know, police officers, et cetera. And I just didn't want that for myself because I could see these other people, um, you know, these 10, 10 years ahead of me, you know, not really happy with the jobs. And that's not say all of them. There's some people who love the job, don't get me wrong, but there's lots of people, um, out of proportion people who, who really were frustrated. So um, I put my kind of dream of becoming a police officer uh, in the bin, so to speak. And then I started to ask myself the question, well, what if, what if I use the same ingredients as a successful entrepreneur? What if I became free? What if I had a business what if i had assets what if i started investing so um long story short um with no credibility i had a bit of savings behind me um and i was fearful i doubt i was you know i had anxiety around going into business for the first time that i start that i made the decision essentially to invest eighteen thousand pounds a bit of my own money and a bit of debt into yeah. learning specialized knowledge and in this area that i went into it was in the property space so it's in uh, specifically it was HMO, so houses of multiple occupation. And long story mm -hmm. short, with a bit of grit, with a bit of hard work, I was able to accumulate uh, a multiple six figure business um, and about 1.5 million pounds worth of assets in, based in Nottingham. Um, and uh, I was financially independent and that was happened within inside 18 months that I was, oh. I was gone. How old were you? How old were you? I was, I started when I was 25 and I left the job, uh, yeah, about 18 months on. So yeah, I was, I was gone. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'll actually tell this story cause it's, it's in my, <laughs> it's in my book that, um, before I resigned, um, one of my sergeants said to me, Alex, I need your help. And we go to this, this, this cell, right. And I, the smell starts to hit us straight away. I said to my sergeant, well, you know, what's wrong? And he says, basically someone's tied something around the neck, right? I'm like, okay, all right, we've got to go in and extract this, this thing around his neck. Unfortunately, the guy is, I'm allowed to swear, bollock naked. He's completely naked. He's covered in his own feces, head to toe and urine. All right. So we, so we go in, well, a sergeant goes in, I stay at the door and he's tiptoeing around the feces and everything else. And we don't want to like, kind of, we don't know if he's, if he's playing or what, or if he's unconscious a sergeant with his gloves removes the uh, the cardigan around his neck. And when he does that, the guy jumps up, 
my sergeant tries to grab him, but he's so slimy and slippery because he's covering his own feces. And then he runs to the door. And unfortunately, you know, you know, you've seen the movies, don't you? I think slow mo slow motion. It starts to happen like that, and everything starts to go slow mo. And this guy's running to me. Uh, and also it so happens this man's very, very well endowed. So this guy's this guy's running towards me. I, I get hands on him. I have to stop him because he's going to run into the custody suite and there's all public there and everything. I'm fighting with this guy, and all I can feel is his is his is his uh phallus, you know, repeatedly hit me and like I'm trying to bounce around, trying to dodge it. It's taking my kneecaps out. And we go to the floor, and essentially I am covered in his feces. I've got feces on my eyelid, feces on my lip, feces in, I've got a nugget in my, in my hair. Yeah. Um, it's everywhere. Right. And I looked at my pace inspector and I'm like, boss, I am, I'm going home. Right. That's the first time I spoke like that to my, uh, my inspector. Right. And, uh, he, he didn't say anything. He was like, yeah, I don't blame you. So I went upstairs, showered and stuff. And, um, I got in my car, went home and then I have another shower. And I really, that was the first point where I was like, oh, I just really don't want to go back. I felt almost a bit humiliated that I was covered in someone else's crap, uh, <laughs> penis slapped, and um, also the stress of just being covered. And also the risk of like, did I catch anything or anything like that? That goes through your mind. And when I was in the shower, actually, and I was on a scrub, um, I remember thinking very clearly, I don't need to go back. At this point, the business was doing so well. The only reason I was staying there was to become mortgageable because we was getting our own house, me and my partner at the time. And they wanted to see PAY income. So essentially I, um, at that moment I resigned. I, uh, yeah, I went off for a little bit. Then after that I, I resigned and I was free. I was essentially free. And then obviously I built shifts to success. Yeah, so I'm just coming to that shit. It sounds like a like, day in the life of a dog room again, covered in poo. <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Som sometimes, Bill, you've got to go through some shit in life. You know, in dog groomers, I'm sure you've got plenty of shit with dog and also, in my case, human poo as well. Yeah, you don't see that in the Daily Mail. They don't report that, do they? <laughs> Definitely not. 100% not, no. So you're free. You, you're financially free from your HMO um, business, your property business. And you had a bit of spare time on your hands, you say. So then you built your second business, Shift to Success. That's so right. Yeah. So, I mean, with the property business, I still got it today. Um, it's a very large you know, portfolio that ticks over nicely. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very lucrative business. But at the same time, it's not something I was ever passionate about. My reasons why was to get out the job because I didn't like the job anymore. Right? I didn't see my future in there. And also, I wanted to prove something to myself and prove other people wrong. But once I achieved that, I kind of realized that I climbed the ladder of success and I was on the wrong building. I realized that I wasn't actually completely passionate about the idea, I, although it, it served me well. And I started to consider other things, what I was passionate about, an idea. I wanted to build another business. I just wanted to do it. All right. And I believe in multiple streams of income for sure. So what I essentially do is start doing some soul searching and I had an ideas book. And this ideas book, I wrote down every single idea that popped into my head, no matter how good or bad it was. And every one of them was bad. Okay. Shift success was not in this book. Okay. But what I started to see was a common theme amongst these books or these, or these ideas. And the common theme was helping people, business, entrepreneurship, freedom, you know, um, inspirational, just these different ideas, but there's all like a common theme amongst them. And on reflection, looking back, I started to get a lot of police officers who were asking me, how did I build a business? How did I do this? Blah, blah, blah. And it hit me. Why don't I help police officers build businesses? And when I started to tell the people the idea, the feedback wasn't great. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it, you know, that would never work. You know, um, you know, police officers are police officers for, the, for life, that kind of thing. The, the job won't let them. There's loads of rejection because this idea didn't exist, right? And uh, I essentially launched the idea in, in uh, God, launched in February 2018, the first event. And uh, that was with first 10 police officers we had. And long story short, now we're up to 177 in our community. We've gone global um, and we've made, you know, changed lives as a collective team, which I'm extremely passionate about. Um, the feelings I could never get from property is all in love. Uh, with with the shift success.
you followed your passion, didn't you? And um, that really rubs off within your community as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I just, you know, there's not every element of business that I love, like, for example, when things go wrong or, you know, uh, I don't know, something mechanically doesn't work, you know, system wise breaks down or an email goes out at the wrong time or something like that or something like, oh, it's frustrating. But everything that trumps that is when our members, they resign, they overcome mental health problems. They, I mean, someone just uh, texted me today. Someone's achieved six figures in 12 months, hundred thousand pound. Someone's, you know, um, got more time with their kids, their family. People have the ability to come out the pension because they don't feel trapped by it. People are winning awards. People are finding their worth, their relationship with their husband's better. That to me is is the feeling that it's a drug it's, it's an honest drug that that continues me to drive forward it it trumps the hard times that business does bring and will continue to bring yeah and you're you're a great um, advocate for surrounding yourself with positive people as well aren't you you're you have to surround yourself with positive people to make that business grow and and to keep yourself going we as, as the founder of the company you set the culture and one thing I did when I started reading these books was stay away from uh, negative kings, drama queens, people who gossip. And um, I've got a zero tolerance for it. I've got a zero tolerance for it with my family. I've got a zero tolerance for it about my friends and also any members that we have um, or, or have had. Um, it's just something that I can't surround myself with because I've noticed when I surround myself with positive people, people who want to move things forward, I'm just a happier human being. Yeah. And it does move you forward as well, doesn't it? It does. It keeps you going. It keeps you moving forward. So, how did you um, you, you set up your businesses? Um, you're still obviously really active in your businesses, but how did you then um, discover investing your money? How did you discover that? So, um, the first investment book I ever read was Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I it was actually one of the first books I read in custody. And I can remember some staff members back then. It was like, oh, why is he reading again? Taking the mic and stuff, and you know they're still there. Um, and yeah, that changed my mindset on investing. Okay. In the property industry, I've never put my own money into a fixed asset, such as property. I've always used investors funds to fund my assets. So to this day, I've not put a single penny of my own money into any of the assets that I own, but when it comes to my own money and my business's money, I invest into, um, assets, companies. Um, through um, index funds that essentially are very liquid. They're also a long-term investment strategy that essentially not only changing, you know, my life, but also my family's tree. So, you know, I want to be the, the person who, who breaks the family tree. You know, I've come, I don't come from a silver spoon or anything like that. I want to be the person that when I have kids um, that, they will earn this, but also when I die, they're going to be left with a considerable amount of money. And also I'm not going to be one of those people where when it comes to retirement that I have to get another job, I have to work until I die. None of that because my money's out there working for me consistently. And that's a, that's a great quote from Warren Buffett. Actually, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you're going to work until you die. Um, so investing for me, I found through books, uh, through investing myself, um, through um, a guy called T. Harvecker as well. Um, and yeah, it's been really helpful. Jason Greystone as well, he teaches it as well. So a lot of things that I've learned from different people and um, it's been a game changer for my life. It's been a game changer for a family's lives and also a members at Shift Success. Yeah, and we'll probably put a list up of um, books worth reading after this, but um, I'm sure I've heard somewhere like poverty is inherited. And you were saying about um, changing your family's life, your family tree. Yeah. So this is a hard one. This might trigger some people. So um, this is going to trigger warning right now for your, for your community bill. So the reason I say, and it's, I've read it somewhere, but I completely agree. Poverty is hereditary. The reason that I say that is because parents, teachers are the people we learn from. Typically our parents are siblings. They are our people we love and respect and we take on board their information and that information can actually knock us back years, at, like years, right? And um, that information then that we learn, we pass on to our kids because we think that's the right thing to do because our parents taught us that. 
And what starts to happen is that 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 knowledge just gets passed on through generation and generation. The way I looked at this is that my parents are not financially successful. They're not financially free. In fact, they hated their jobs. My teachers hated their jobs. In fact, I might be the reason why they hated their jobs, the teachers, <laughs> right? So I was thought to myself, well, why should I take advice from these people where they're not living the life that they truly love? They're not, they're, they're, they're working 40 plus hours a week for money. For me, it's a no-brainer. Why would I take advice? I want to take advice from someone who's got congruency. I want to take advice from someone who has actually got what I want, who's got a successful business, who's investing, who's is doing what he's preaching or her, right? Mm -hmm. Not someone who thinks that's the way right to do. So for me, I just, again, observe the masses and do the opposite. The masses for me were saying, get a safe, secure job, you know, go to university, get a pension. And, you know, I, I didn't want to follow that advice. And I'm 31 now and debt free. And I'm glad I didn't because if I did, I might have ended up in a completely different life. Yeah, I certainly wish that I'd learned this <clears throat> sort of 20 years ago. Um, and we had this conversation before we went live. It's like, imagine what our lives would be like if we'd learned this at the age of 18 and like invested in the markets or, you know, put a couple of grand into the markets and then. Yeah, and that's what, that's exactly, the, you know, you've hit the nail on the head. If, 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 I, if I did this stuff when I was 18, I would be a lifetime ahead. Um, I mean, you know, in, in a different level. Um, and in fact, I'm going to share um, some examples with your audience based on starting at different ages, which hopefully will blow their minds. I know it blew my mind. And trust me, what I'm going to show you is going to be your new addiction. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> Come on in. Let's, go, let's have a look at your, uh, your presentation. Cool. So this has been great, obviously, um, for one of our products, Investing to Success. And before I share this, I just want to say that this is not financial advice. I'm not going to share with you what funds I invest in whatsoever. This is to make you aware of the things that you can achieve in the world of investing. Okay. This is my passive investment strategy that I literally it passively earns money. Um, and this is a long term strategy. So I'm not investing for the next five, 10, 15 years. This is, you know, 15 year plus. That I'm essentially going to do, and to be honest, my retirement fund, if, if you know, when I want to retire. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, again, I just want to reiterate, this is not financial advice. So I'm going to go on to this, and just to make sure this is not financial advice. All right. <laughs> it's not financial advice. I put that in all the adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So um, this is a great quote that I want to start off, and this is Warren Buffett, arguably one of the greatest investors on planet Earth. And he says, and this has always stuck to me, if you don't find a way to make money whilst you sleep, you're going to work until you die. Uh, and that it also happens in the job aspect. So having a job. So a lot of pensions now we're finding, especially people I deal with as police officers, that the pension is not enough and they have to get a second job. They have to go into business. They have to do one of those things. And they, you know, work in their 65 plus, right? And, and they don't want to do that, um, which is- yeah, but You actually have a lot of teachers um, within the community that have- um sort of had enough of teaching so they turn to to pet grooming so it's very similar isn't it exactly exactly that exactly that we find that a pension not going to be enough um and you know you compare the numbers in a second what i'm going to share with you but um a great way of investing is that you don't have to you know sacrifice your time to earn money so by investing my money and, and i know you're an investor bill that your money's out there working for you whilst we're doing things that we love right we don't have to work to invest into a pension if that makes sense mm. great stuff so why invest so for me i've never had a pension i've opted out of a pension just because i don't um, believe in them i think they're a retention tool for employees to stay where they are and also to help with retirement but as we know the pensions are being more diluted as we go on um so why do i invest control um i have absolute control of my own finances i think one of the riskiest things that people can do is give their finances over to someone else, such as a pension fund, such as a, a, an actively managed fund, right? And for me, that's not great. If you try and um, get your money from a pension, they'll say, sorry, you've got to wait until you're 65 or 55 or whatever pension scheme you're in. Um, whereas when you invest, you actually have control and you can liquidate your assets whenever you like. Uh, again, property is even not as liquid as this, okay? So this is an index fund strategy, which I'm going to share with you. The reason you, I... Sorry, yeah. can you just explain the term liquidate and liquid? 
Sure, absolutely. So um, if I was going to sell a property, one of my properties, then it would take uh, months to go through. I'd have to find a buyer. I'd have to get the broker involved, let the mortgage company know there's all these moving parts. It's the money, the equity is locked in a fixed asset, right? Liquid means that there's cash reserves that you can get very quickly. Okay. So with index funds and index funds, by the way, is a, is a list of companies. Okay. A list of companies. Um, when I, if I want to liquidate my index funds, I can do that within five business days, which means I can get the money in my bank cash very quickly. Okay. Cool. So you can liquidate your assets. I can sell my properties or sorry, sell my index funds and get them uh, in my bank ASAP. Okay. So liquid just means money cash. Okay, nice. quick. So another reason is passive income. So as I explained um, with index funds, it's earning me money without me doing a single thing. Literally nothing. I invest the money and that is it. I forget about it. Property and, and HMO portfolio is not passive. Any property educator who tries to sell you on the fact that property is passive is lying, run from the hills. I'm, I've got a large portfolio. It's not passive whatsoever. I've been sharing some stories with Bill before our, for our talk. Um, also invest from any in the world, anywhere in the world. So I'm based in the UK. Well, I can invest in markets in Japan, in America, in Germany, which is awesome. Whereas in property, typically you've got to invest in the UK unless you travel abroad and it's a bit of a nitty gritty because you've got to travel back and forth. There's a problem with tenants back there in America. You've got to travel to America or you've got to find a management company. It's just a bit of clunky with index fund investing. I can do it from my laptop anywhere in the world. And the last one, the big one for me, especially with my upbringing, is to build generational wealth. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons as well why I went into my first business is that I don't want to be able to sacrifice time away from my kids when they're young and growing up. I want to be there for them. I want to play golf with them. I want to play football with them, right? I want to be there that I don't have to say, oh, I've got to go on shift right now. I've got to do a night shift or I've got an injury and put my life on the line. That's, that wasn't for me. Um, so with index fund investing, the numbers that I'm going to share with you soon are, are hopefully going to shock you of what you can achieve. But I want to be the person in my family tree that if my kids are ever in trouble, if they are, if I pass away, that they are going to be completely fine from a financial point of view. But not only that, through the information that you're going to get a hint of today, that they can pass on to their kids. So it's going to create that legacy after I die. Okay, it's a great quote. That's not my quote again, but a good person leaves wealth for their children's children. All right. Um, so that's kind of the reasons why I invest. In a nutshell, what I'm going to share with you, this is my investment strategy. Okay. So first of all, I want to direct your eyes to job income. So with a job income, unfortunately, you're going to be capped. Okay. So you can work overtime, don't get me wrong. You know, you can ask for a pay rise, but unfortunately, not, you know, 10 out of, nine, nine out of 10 times, it's going to be capped. Um, there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only a certain amount of time. There's only one of you. And also there's only so much work or, or so much salary that your employer can provide to you. Okay. With that being said, I know plenty of people who have got jobs who still invest into index funds. And that, trust me, is better than nothing. Trust me. The next one is business income. So as we know, in business, it's unlimited earning potential. We can raise our prices. We can launch new products. We can go into a different sector. We can decrease, decrease costs. We can accelerate our income in a whole heap of ways. Okay. So it's uncapped. And what we want to do there is quite simply save, sorry, spend less than we earn. So we want to save a proportion of our salary. And there's something called lifestyle inflation that I see many people get. So you know, a lot of people will um, get a promotion, they'll get a bit of money from mum and dad, or they'll get uh, some money that comes in like inheritance. And all of a sudden, their lifestyle in increase, they'll get a bigger mortgage, they'll get a new car, they will you know, get some go on holiday, right, they'll do some things that are consumerism habits. And financial literacy is very critical here. Because actually, it's not just about how much we earn, it's about how much we save and invest. So with your newfound income, and you can find a lot of income here as well, but also a lot here. You want to spend less, save more, and invest the difference. That's it. Spend less than you earn and invest the difference. 
Hopefully, I don't know who's watching right now, but I'd highly recommend you write that down. All right. So what you want to do there is invest that into index funds. Then you've got the time equation and you've got the compounding. And this, this word compound interest oh, it give, it, it's the sexiest word ever. I love it. I, I, I still love it today. I'm, in fact, I'm not a tattoo person, but I'm thinking of getting a tattoo of the equation because it's so, so good. And hopefully I'm going to share with you and you'll realize why it's so good in a second. But hopefully does that make sense? Bill, have you got any questions on this? So I can uh, just maybe in case your audience are wondering. No, it's something that um, you sort of, we all teach is, you know, um, take control of your income and take control of your expenditure and know exactly what's coming in and going out. And then when you um, take control of it, that then enables you to see the savings, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. We found as well, we've got a, we've got a thing inside Shift Success, a, a lesson where, you know, we've had members who have discovered they're spending way much on, too much on takeaways, too much on uh, frappuccinos from Starbucks and, they're renegotiating with Virgin Broadband and all these things. They find all this savings, which then they can fund their business to accelerate their income and then, or they can invest. So, you know, sometimes it comes down to a mindset of actually with the income we've got, what can we start saving from that income, right? It's living below our means is a very underrated quality. So um, Tash has just said for someone that's never invested, where do you start? Oh, we're going to go, we're going to go to that. We're going to go to that. In fact, I'm going to say it now. The first place to start is to look at your spending. What I recommend a task you do is download 12 months worth of bank statements, personal bank statements, and look at what you can renegotiate, reduce, or remove. And you were quite surprised with certain things that you'll discover that actually you don't need to spend money on. So we found that, you know, one of our clients was uh, spending £7,000 on Starbucks a year, yeah. right? Uh, we renegotiated with Virgin Broadband. That saved us about, you know, I think about £30 a month or something like that. You know, we started to look at um, certain things. Memberships was paying for, we didn't even realize. So it starts to add up. So I would recommend the first port of call is to look at your spending. Download 12 bank statements. Look at that. Look at, look at re renegotiating, reducing, or removing. From that then... I would then to look at accelerating your income because the more money you invest with the time equation, which is just as important, is going to help you get to your, get to your financial goal, which I will share with you um, some, some examples in a second. So hopefully that answers your question. There's going, um, going back to the, the previous slide, you said about um, putting money into a pension and the yep. control thing. Yep. And we got a pension forecast through, um, uh, beginning of the year maybe in the last year mm -hmm. and now one of our pensions is invested in the uk markets through aviva and they'd lost and i know why it's lost lost four and a half thousand pounds in a year and i know that's because it's invested in the uk markets and it's invested in you know covid really hit the uk markets and and brought it all down but we took control of that pension and started investing it ourselves and i've made back um about 1200 pounds already within um, three or four months. So yeah, like exactly. Whole element is so important for me. Hundred percent. And with index funds, so you mentioned Aviva there. That is, um, you know, essentially one company, right? So you're yeah, investing yeah. in one company. Whereas index funds is a whole range of companies. So let's say if I'm investing in one company, I love Tesla. Right? I love Elon Musk. He's one of my favorite entrepreneurs. If I invest a thousand pound in Tesla, hypothetically, this is just an example. But then Elon smokes a spliff on the Joe Rogan podcast again, which he's actually done. That stock is going to dip, right? So for stock picking, we don't know. We can't control what a company does. But with index funds, because there's a whole list of companies, um, you know, 500 in one fund, there could be a 3,000 in another fund. If one company underperforms, then the other companies are still, you know, still kind of keeping that index fund up because they're performing well. So with an index fund, you don't just have a company diversification. So if I invest in one company, I'm not diversified. I'm, that's risky. With index funds, a whole range of companies. So I've got company diversification. You've also got sector diversification. So if I'm investing in, so, uh, you know, the dot-com crash, right? There was a, there was a, the IT consumables sector went under essentially, because a lot of investors are investing in that area and it had a boom and it popped. Well, if I'm investing in those types of companies, 
um, then I could be a bit risky there, right? But with index funds, they've got a whole range of companies, which means they're in different sectors, such as consumables. It could be um, IT. It could be manufacturing. It could be health. Again, I'm not diversified to one sector. Sorry, I'm not risking putting my eggs in one basket. I'm diversified in sector. But then you've also got time diversification. So a lot of people, unfortunately, they try and guess the market. I'm going to buy when it's low, sell when it's high. And that's gambling. You don't know when the market's going to go up or down. None of us can, okay? We only can look on hindsight. But with index funds, we invest every single month consistently. And whether the market's up or down, that doesn't really matter in the short term because we're investing for the long term. And that time diversification over the long term comes back to the average mean, which is what we're looking for. Not what's happening in the up and down, but actually the long term. So you've got time diversification, which is amazing, company diversification, and also you've got um, sector diversification, which minimizes risk massively. Yeah, and this and this is what makes it, um, although I think a lot of the blockage for people and what put people off is that fear and not knowing how to do it or how or what they're doing. Whereas when you actually learn how to do it, it's quite simple because you're not trading, you're not trying to look at the markets every day and decide whether to move money or not. You're just... Um, dripping money into your index funds and that's it isn't it is it you just be patient and it goes up it's completely i mean i'm you know my index funds are up um you're completely investing for the long term and i would say don't look at it so i just i don't care what's happening right now i care about what's happening in the next 10 20 30 years because it's a long-term investment strategy so, uh, so yeah, it's not, you know, if you're trying to get a crypt, there's a lot of cryptocurrency people out there at the minute who try to make a quick put. That's gambling. That is speculation. This is investing. Okay. So the core essence of this always is freedom. So again, this is back to my wealth strategy where my businesses feed my investments and my investments feed my business. At the center of all this is absolute freedom. Freedom in actually from my business when I want to have freedom from my business, but also freedom to do what I want as well. Okay, so they fund each other. So let's say if my business or businesses take a dip, well, I've got my investments there, they can pick my business back up. But also if my business does well, it feeds my investments. So it's just, it's, it's a continuous cycle. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to share an example now, and then I'm going to share a live example of actually, uh, you know, what you can achieve. Okay. Or what, what, what potentially could happen in your investments as well. Have you got any questions before I, I go on? Um, Clinis just sort of said, what about us oldies? So sort of, I'm not going to guess your age, Clinis, but um, what about if you've not come to this, it might be something that you, you go on to, but, you know, I'm 41, I'm doing it. I wish I'd done it 20 years ago. What if you're sort of plus 41 and older? You know, you can still make money, can't you? You still, and, and you're making money for your children and your children's children. Absolutely. But also if you are of an older age, because time is a very important factor when it comes to investing is that you'd have to invest more. Um, that's not to say you can't earn phenomenal returns. I mean, you've got someone in our fifties, a part of investing to success and uh, she's made some great money as well. Um, but yeah, you're investing at 40, I mean, 40 now. So it's, let's say you're 40 years old, you've got 50, 60, 70, but I mean, still 30 years is a long time and having a lot of money then is, better than having a lot of money never i've used that um compounding calculator i know um you know i've i've, I've put the figures through so Guinness is 57 so right um, okay but we'll, we'll probably look at that the, the calculator definitely definitely so i'm going to show you an example now so this is john um and john saves 500 pound per month right and he gets 2% in an interest account in his local bank. Now, of course, we know we're not getting that in banks at the minute because banks are very low, but that's what John's doing. Now, Josie saves £500, exactly the same, and she gets 10, a 10% 10 return by investing in index funds. Okay, I'm going to share what fund or anything like that, but she invests in index funds. Now, both invest for 30 years, paying a total of 108 thousand okay so they invest exactly the same he gets one hundred eighty thousand pounds so does josie they're both got that amount of money to play with that's what they're essentially he's saving she's saving but she's investing as well john achieves 
£246,773. Uh, not bad. Now, Josie achieves £1,139,662.66. Now, you might be wondering how that house as it happens, even based on a 10% return, I'm going to share with you what compound interest is in a second. But you can see here that John's breakdown is his deposits in green, right? That's his kind of monthly um, deposits. But then his passiveness, his interest that he's earning from his 2% is much, you know, it's much smaller. Whereas Josie on the flip side is completely different. Josie's is green in her deposit. She's investing exactly the same as John, but she has a completely different element when it comes to interest. She's actually earning more interest than what she's investing, which is very, very powerful. So what I'm going to share with you now is a new addiction. Welcome. This is your new heroin. And I play around this all the time. My friends do it. Uh, my, my partner does. Uh, and a few of our members do as well, which I'm going to share with you. You can all play along with this as well, by the way. Bill does as well. And this, this, is, the, um, this is the compound interest calculator, okay? So it's compound, sorry, the calculator site.com. I'm going to play around this, okay? So let's say, I'm going to use an example first of all with the parents. No, in fact, I'm not going to use parents. I'm going to use um, just, let's say, uh, what should I say, 30 years old. Let's say you're 30 years old and you're investing hypothetically, okay? And you can play around the numbers yourself. Initial deposit is zero because you've never invested before. So you want to put zero in there. The interest rate, now the interest can go up and down in the short term, but we know the funds that I invest in over the long term mean as have achieved 10% since inception, okay? Since the, this particular fund I invest in. Um, obviously you can factor in inflation and stuff, but we're going to factor in the actual uh, return of this particular um, uh, market, uh, this fund. So I'm going to put 10% in here. And that, that is um, consistently returning at least 10%, isn't it? I know the fund and it's yep. consistently returning a 10% interest every year, at that's least 10%. That's right. I mean, it was so, I mean, one year it could go be like three, one year it could go five, but then one year it could be 22. But that long-term mean that we're investing, it always brings it back to that 10%. So a lot of people like up and down, like, oh, the panic. Don't worry, you only lose money when you sell anyway. So don't, don't sell when you're down. But remember that 10% is what we're looking for, which since inception has been there. So what we're going to do now is do for, let's say, let's say uh, 30 years old and you've got 35 years until you reach retirement. Okay, so 65 years old. And let's say you can put in, I don't know, um, what should we say? What should we say? 250. 250? So 250 pounds. That's, a, that's um, probably my consumption of Costa. Okay, so 250 is your saving that you put in there. So we're going to invest that for 35 years. And that's going to give you just under a million based on 250 pounds. Which is absolutely crazy. Okay. But what we're going to do as well now for those who've got pensions, I'm not anti pension, by the way, I'm pro choice, pro choice. And I'll, I'll walk through why, why it actually equals that in a second. But let's say I'm going to use police officers because, you know, I'm from the public sector and I, I do this all the time. So let's say they put their pension in here at 425 on average is what they invest over their lifetime. Let's change that to 30 years you will see here is again, they get under that for 960,000, just under a million, which is absolutely phenomenal compared on what they would normally get. But let's say now you're in business. So let's say you're in business now and you can, you know, you can actually invest a lot more. And let's say you can start putting in 700 pounds per month because there's no cap in your income. 1.5 million, which is absolutely crazy. Okay, and I'll go into a second, another example. Let's say you now know of this stuff and you start investing for your child. Let's say you just had a newborn baby. You only invest £200 for them, but they've got obviously 65. And of course, 18 years old, you might want to say to them, hey, Jeff, uh, it's time to take over 
and you're 18 now, you're earning, I want you to take over your investment pot and I want you to start contributing. 200 pound for 65 years, 15 million. Is that right? Yep, 65 years, 10% return, 200 pound only for 65 years is 15 million. Okay, now I'm gonna share with you I'm going to share with you why this is so much because you might be thinking, well, 200 pound over 65 years is still not 50 million. All right. So I'm going to explain what compound interest is and why I love it so much. So in this example, guys, year one, we've invested 2,400 pound. And you can see here, the total interest is 113 pound. Okay. That the, that's the 10% really. It's just above 10%, but we're just going to use 10% as a quick, quick kind of example. You can see now in, in year two, there's also 2,400 again invested. So there's no increase whatsoever in investments. But all of a sudden, there's more than double the year before in interest. Why is this? Well, what's happened is that you've actually kept this money in from the year before. So now you've got 4,800 in the pot because you've got 2,400 there plus 2,400 there. Okay, so that's the 10% on that. But also... You've got 10% on the interest you earned before. And what starts to happen is that it becomes the interest on the interest. It starts to compound. It's the growth upon the growth. And over the years, this starts to go through the roof. So you can see it, you're earning here are 5,000 in interest this year. But essentially, the total interest you've earned is 26,000 because you keep earning the interest on the interest and also earning the interest on the deposits you've been putting in which is mind blown, right? So what starts to happen? This starts to go through the roof, compounding, compounding, compounding. And then of course we go down where you've actually earned. You've only invested 156,000 in this example, but you've earned 15,000 in completely passive, not doing a single thing. And we can look at the charts here, go to the graph. It looks like that. You're investing very little, but you're getting massive in compound interest. Now, of course, this is using 65 years. So for a lot of people, this is going to change. It might be that you have um, until you reach retirement or want to retire that you've got, you've got 20 years. Or in 20 years, you might want to start investing more. And you want to start might point a thousand pound every single month and stop keeping that in the bank because of inflation. And you're going to end up with 759,000. Okay. So if you've got shorter on time, you're of an older age you'd want to invest more because you've got a short amount of time. But if you're of a younger age, work out the numbers. So I've got X, Y, Z till I'm, till I'm 65 or 70, depending on what your retirement age is, you want that to be. And then figure out and have a play. How much money do I need to invest if I'm achieving a 10% return every single month to get to my goal? That's it. And people might say, well, you know, we have savings, but what if I need the money or um, what's the point of having savings? I want to live now. But you can, once you get to a certain point, could you not live off the interest? Because your money is still generating that. Absolutely. So it's a great question. So here's my thoughts on this. Number one, I would put, I only have a six month cash buffer in my businesses and my personal life in case anything goes wrong. That's an emergency fund. Worst case scenario, something happens, I'm going to be okay, I can get money just like that. If I keep anything over that in the bank, you are going to be eroded away by inflation. You are losing buying power by having your money in the bank because the cost of living is increasing. Okay, so that's my person. That's why I want to invest. I only keep six month cash buffer in reserves. But also, if you did really want your money and you want it quick, you can get your money through the platform that I invest in or the fund I invest in within five business days. So you can get the money back very quickly. But also at the same time is what's the pain? So there's the pain of having not enough money in the bank worse than not having enough when you retire or, you know, when you pass away, is there something to pass on to your kids, etc. It's your, you know, it's your choice at the end of the day. So the reason why I don't have you know, too much cash out there sitting in the bank was be is because I'm investing a lot of it. And um, I believe that inflation is 2%, I believe, per year on average. That is eroding right. away your money. Yeah, it's a bit more than that at the moment. But yeah. There you go. Yeah. And if you did want to just dip in for a holiday, you've still got that lump sum 
sitting in your investments, generating that interest over and over again. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't answer this, the second part of your question. So to live off your interest, you know, I want to, so let's say I'm, I'm 31 years old. So I've got, you know, I started investing by my twenties, high twenties. So let's just say 35 years to make it quick. So if I start investing a thousand pounds, I'm investing in that. What I would, wouldn't do is just great. I've got 3.7 million and go, right, that's going into my bank because you're going to get hit by capital gains tax. You're going to, you know, and you, to be honest, you, if, if you withdraw that, you, I don't know. I think, I think it's more of a mindset issue if you do withdraw of that. Okay. Um, instead, what I would do is something called the Trin Trinity study. I would withdraw 4% of my investments only. The reason I would withdraw 4% is because I can work out if I want to live off a six figure lifestyle when I'm 65, I've got to make sure that I've got in a passive income of, you know, six figures first, right? So I want to withdraw 4% of this. So have you got your calculator bill? Can you do 4% of 3.7 million? Oh, here we go. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> 151,865. There you go. So that is above, you know, 100,000 pounds. Um, and that, basically that means that my investments are going to carry on growing, even though I could withdraw that kind of money. It just gets to that point, doesn't it? Where money just makes more money and then it make, makes more money. <laughs> uh, the way I want to look at money, um, a lot of people get emotional about money. Yeah, you know, I've got, I believe you've got to be emotionless about money. And I want people, and this is something I teach inside investing success is where you want your money to be team members. You want them to be employees and their job, their sole job is to go out there and make you more money. That's it. Make your money work for you. That's it. Money. That's it. That's exactly it. So how do we go about it? How are you going to um, tell us a little bit about the, your, your course, your platform that you run so that we can go and get that information? Sure, absolutely. So I have a platform called Investing to Success. Um, Investing to Success will teach you everything there is to know about index funds. We've got a lot of our own members in there currently, and it will show you the funds I invest in. It will show you how to do it. So I literally show you and share my screen of how to do it. I explain the reasons why index funds are so powerful. There's little assessments in there. Um, the Trinity study, I've just explained and why that's important. Your financial independence number, how to reduce debt. There's lots of things in there to basically help you create wealth. And also, because a lot of people have been asking, is that the property module is coming later this year. I've literally just wrapping up the last few bits of that. And then the filming for that will commence. But essentially, this is a, it's an online course, an online program. Um, and it's step by step. It's uh, you log in, you got your login details. There's a private membership community. And long story short, the whole purpose of it is to help you build generational wealth. Okay, this is not about becoming a million overnight. This is a long term investment strategy, and it is information as well. I've got to say that it's not financial advice at all. So essentially, um, what Bill's got is a link that explains what's included as a part of investing success. And uh, what you've got to do is fill that out. And there's a bit of an offer on for uh, Bill's clients, which we explained inside the link. Um, and we're more than happy to help you build generational wealth, essentially. In short, everything there is to know in index funds to invest uh, in a you know, more informative manner. Yeah. And it's to take away that fear, isn't it, of doing it and to get you to do it. It's to take away the fear and to get you to do it. Risk investing, investing is risky when you don't know what you're doing. And, but then there's a risk element of not investing too, because you know, the pension might not be enough. Inflation's going up. You're going to have to work until you die. You know, you're going to have to be a, a nuisance to your kids when they're older, you know, and you know, no one really wants to be that person. You know, I, I put something on my Instagram the other day. Um, your kids aren't in your retirement um, fund, right? They shouldn't be. They've got their own lives to live. Build your own wealth. Yeah, and the one the one reason why, and I remember um, 
speaking to you a long time ago about this and I was like I've got money sitting in um, like an ISO in the bank Mm -hmm. or I've got money sitting in premium bonds and it just doesn't do anything and I I was getting to that stage where I was starting to worry that I might have to start paying the banks to hold my money because interest rates were going so low Mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to start charging us to hold that money so to get into this um, to get into the investing I now see and I'm I'm probably doing it wrong, but I, I look at my um, account every day just to yeah. see how it's going. Yeah. And give myself a little high five when it's like nine, 10 percent yeah. and um, show off to my family going, yeah, look, look what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's um, I'm so pleased that I'm able to do that. And it makes me happier that I'm actually doing something with those hard earned savings because it is, can be hard to save at times, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm doing something with those savings. And they eventually they're going to start working for me. So absolutely, I, I think investing adds. Just got a um, question. Sure. Yeah. No, go on. Sorry, I can ask it. On. No, I was just saying investing. I think adds a layer of security, and knowing that your money's out there working for you, and that's compounding without you doing anything, is is a great feeling. Yeah, and I'm just dropping it in every time. So uh, Alison's saying, are the monthly deposits into index funds flexible? So if you want to put more or less in month by month, is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah, you can choose how much you want to put in um, and what, you know, for how long for. Um, you can even automate the process, Alison. So one thing I do is sell a direct debit every single month. So I don't even need to think about it. So your literal wealth is being built on autopilot. Um, and what I love about this it is passive. So you're not speaking to a manager. You're not doing anything. You are in control. You are investing yourself. Um, and because of that, that's why the fees are so low when it comes to investing. They are st- mm. they're ridiculously low, whereas actively managed funds are much higher because there's a human being deciding what to invest in. Um, but instead, I use data and, um, and yeah, his- historical records to invest. Yeah, and like, I can reassure people, that, like you said, Alex, the fees are just like, you look at it and just think, I can't believe that's that much. They are really, really low. And um one thing that we do for our business so um, we're a limited company and we can put money into a pension and mm. again that pension is then invested into the into the index funds that is correct that's exactly right and, and i'm not an accountant when i say this whatsoever so you know speak to your own accountants but you know instead of a corporation this is something a corporation tax you can put that Instead of putting paying the HRMC, you can actually put that into a pension and reduce your corporation tax and actually keep that money for yourself for when you retire. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, company pensions which are different to government and public, you know, job pensions, um, and also you've got your index funds for your personal investment strategy as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Alex. And no I'll take it that's the end of your, your little show. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Um, I, yeah, I'm passionate about this subject. It's good. I wish more people know about it. I wish it was taught in schools more. Um, you know, I'm just, I, I'm thankful, you know, I, I found it at a young age, really, in the grand scheme of things. Although I do feel a bit old uh, now. I just can't grow a beard like you, Bill. That's why I'm not in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, even when you grow a beard, you can grow your eyebrows as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alison said uh, thank you, and I'm uh, I'm assuming she could, I'm assuming you can start off with a lump sum if you want to. It's great question. So with, is that with actually a lesson we've got inside our module, investing a lump sum versus dollar cost averaging, which is investing every single month, uh, regardless of you know the, the up and down of the markets, right? Lump sum investments and do your own research as well, which I share with you links. Is that um, I think I think there's an average I think seventy percent of the time lump sum investing beats dollar cost averaging because you've got your money more more time in the market. So let's say you've got thirty thousand pounds to invest hypothetically, okay? Well, that thirty thousand pounds you would if you're dollar cost averaging, you're splitting up and investing every single month, which means that if you're lump sum averaging, you're putting that money in straight away. But if you're dollar cost averaging, you're well, you're having less in the markets over a period of time, right? So because of that, you've actually got you know more time in the markets, which is producing that compound interest more. Um, yeah, so that's you know there's clients inside investing to success who have done both, and I do both. So I, if I've got a lump sum of cash, I will invest that for the long term, 
but also my direct debits go out every single month for dollar cost averaging as well. I mean, let's use that as an example. If you've got time, let's, let's, um, so if I put in zero here and let's put in, let's say 30,000, as I ex explained, and let's use that to, I don't know, should we do 20 years? 30,000 pounds, oops, 30,000 pounds, 10%, 20 years, 0% deposit. Let's have a look. So 219,000. So 30 grand turn into 290,000 for not doing anything is not too bad at all. Yeah, we, we have our direct debits going in, but we just took some dividends out of our um, pet groom business and I just whacked three grand straight in. That's another thing as well. You just mentioned dividends. So by investing in index funds, you get paid from the companies that you invest in. So like you get paid, you know, I think my last one was about 86 pounds, which is not a lot, but when you reinvest those dividends over the long term, because you get paid every single quarter, that that really skyrockets your compound interest even more. You're getting paid money by investing in these companies as a because you own a piece of the company, invest it back into the markets, it just takes it again to a different level. That's it. And we're talking about like um, companies like Amazon and Apple and GSK and all sorts of people like that. Coke, Pepsi, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Nike, um, they're all in there. They're typically, you know, the top companies in the world. A lot of people say, you know, but what if, you know, you know, the markets go kaput? If the markets go kaput, there's worse that you best buy a shotgun because zombie apocalypse is about to crack out. Uh, the, the money would be obsolete. There'd be complete chaos and anarchy if there was no companies. Yeah. And if the, if the markets start dropping, you put... More, more in. in yeah exactly so people will like panic because you know they see their money going down in their investment account that like, oh no i'm losing you're not losing money you only lose money when you sell so if you sell because you're panicking because you feel like you're losing money that's that's an emotional mind with money whereas investors professional investors look at that and go brilliant i can buy more investments at a cheaper price because they know the markets always go up they always go up Always go. And uh, Alison was like, uh, said most of us are self-employed. So being able to change the amount you put in each month is really important, I think. And it's really easy to, to be flexible with the amount of money you put in. Absolutely. hundred percent. Absolutely. You can do it yourself manually, direct debit, and you can, how much or little is up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So investing to success, I'm going to put um, all your links and the link to that course um in the in the chat afterwards and then when it goes onto youtube i'll put it on into the comments there it's uh, an online training platform and then also a facebook community isn't it i think so you can support each other that's right that's right any questions or anything like that it's a private secret group uh, i'm in there other investors are in there um and we're all investing for our future that's it awesome and if anyone's got any more questions for you or they want to um you know, just have a little bit more information or a bit more of a chat. How can they get hold of you? Yeah, my email is alex at shifts to success.com. And obviously, you can follow me on social media. My Instagram is Alexander Siri. Facebook is Alexander Siri as well. Um, and I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you. And I think the um, price is on the on the list on the on the link, but do you want to go that's, to the price? That's right. I believe the price is around uh, £99 plus VAT per month. Um, for 12 months that's it but if yeah. you want to if you prefer to pay it off in full that's completely fine as well cool you know this is investing in yourself and your education to then uh, make more money basically isn't it money leads to money what we found that people who have signed up because of compound interest the 99 pound becomes very you know obsolete depending on how much they invest because of the in investment passiveness they're getting yeah yeah there you go. We've got some uh, best live yet, apparently. Oh, God, who said that? <laughs> Alison. <laughs> Alison, I'll pay you later. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa said that was so interesting. Thank you. Awesome. Um, you know, this is this is not what you get in normal Facebook groups, is it? This is sort of smashing it out of the park, getting really good um, information for our followers and getting the best advice and uh, setting them up for the future. So it's you know, I can only thank you um, enough for coming on and explaining all this for us and for our listeners and viewers. No problem at all. Thank you for having me, Bill. I appreciate it. That's all right. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.